questions. Thank you. No, thank, thank you for that. Um, I have a question which I thought was going to turn out to be very much uh, um, a sort of side question just relating to something you said at the beginning. But then you came back to, to the end and so it's not a side question anymore. What I want to agree with was your claim that when you just have one wave function, then it's automatic that there's no metric result. It seems to me it's easy to describe um, a possibility such that with one wave function or with one deterministic classical picture, there is rhetoric result. And so let's, I'll do it with a classical picture. Suppose, suppose, um, suppose we, we live in a classical deterministic world, and suppose we have the ordinary notion of free choice that you're presupposing. I'm going to decide now whether to lift up this pin. If I lift up this pin, then it means that the initial conditions of the universe are one way. If I don't lift it up, they're another way. So there's a trivial kind of rhetoric causality which comes from the fact that in such a world, I have control over the initial conditions. And you, and you can do a similar thing with a, of course, with a, with a single deterministic wave function. What, what your of course, if you can know those initial conditions, or if you can know the initial body function, then you can't have that. There's no place for, for that kind of free Okay. The structure which I see is what we should do for the theory. We have this box. In the box, there are all kinds of things. Now, in addition, I can put inside things. So you could take your pen and put it inside. And then ask what happened for things in the box. You don't ask what happened for this pen. For, for, you, this is external thing. The whole idea is there is a free choice, free intervention. So I have all kinds of objects given there. I will not discuss uh, why in I that, did this. In that, this in, is, that, in, in that case, you're simply putting in the no record of by hand in assuming that the contents of the box are, as it were, fixed at the beginning but not fixed at the end. Okay, they're not fixed in the beginning. I can prepare whatever box, but then it's kind of given for me. Now, for now, I, I can make later. In your, in your example, but when you put this and you change, uh, there, there are things in the box which I want to. Uh, I, I assume some initial condition, and I want to know. I have an error of time. I want to know what will happen to it. I don't, I don't have. Well, the, it's, the, maybe it's the, hidden the, there. The phrase I assume some initial condition. That's the point at which, in your picture with the box, you're slipping in a no uh, But this, I think, is not... Of course, we have error of time. The whole idea of measurement. If I want to do a measurement, I don't know this, uh, this what I want to measure before, and I want to know it later. But it has nothing to do with physics. It's just with the concept of what's meaning of measurement. Measurement to find out something. So but, then, no, but, then, but you're, you're assuming that, in principle, you do know the initial condition of the box. If you set up the, your, your condition with your box, with the specification that all you know is, as it were, a, 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 a macroscopic description of the initial condition, then there's room in that. No, 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 I, 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 want, I know micro everything. No, I don't exactly, want, exactly. I don't want to, ma when I know my box, I suppose to know everything. Exactly, but that's, that's where you're slipping in your no-recognizable condition. It's not coming from the fact that you've just got one wave function or one deterministic picture. It's coming from something that you're building into the picture at that point. Okay. okay. Can we come back to one uh, of the slides where you have the, 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 compl the complicated interferometer with the, the two wave function? Um, we had a forward and back. I have one. one slide which I don't want to show, <laughs> but, uh, like this one, or you want okay, two wave functions? Okay. The two wave function will be. Uh, okay, like so this. let's. let's Sorry. Doesn't. Um, sorry. Uh. Yeah, okay. So here, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. So uh, on the, the forward direction, nothing comes down from F to, to the last beam spinner. Nothing yes. comes down here. That's your claim. And that's the claim I want to challenge. Because <laughs> when, when, you, when you wiggle these mirrors uh, B and A, A and B, 
by wiggling them, you necessarily have something. You cannot have. It. So, unfortunately, so this is uh, this question that for which I have an answer. I kind of after the talk. Sorry, it's here. <laughs> okay, so first, you know, I believe in wave function. Everything, uh, the two-state vector uh, wave formalism is helpful. Maybe I could ask my question. I, 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 if it will be Can we hear the question? <laughs> Some other people want to. Okay. Uh, I, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. The question, well, I never asked it to you. Okay. But it's not something that I'm repeating. Yeah. But so, if there is indeed nothing going from F to the last bit splitter, why not, don't you just block that with, that, with your hand in it? And if you would put your hand, it changes the result. Yeah, I think. And uh, so, yes. the fact that you, by putting your hand to change the result shows that something is going there. Yeah, the one yes. coming from the future. The one uh, the somehow, there. just first, do I have it? Oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, if I block this, if I block this, nothing will happen. And in my picture, it's clear why nothing will happen. If I block, if I put the block here, the backward wave away function will not come here. Then, of course, the bottom was not here and here. So if I block it, nothing will, will happen. Now, the question, it seems miracle, and how it is how it presented. It's completely how, if nothing comes from here to here, how this detector knows. And I believe in one way, the one way formalism. The two state vector formalism is very helpful, it's shortcut, it immediately tells me the outcome. But of course, I have to reproduce it in the standard quantum mechanics. So, this is a one state vector formalism explanation of this picture. Uh, it should exist. Maybe then it's make a little less interesting the, the, uh, the result. <coughs> so, sorry. Now it doesn't cooperate. So if when when I move this, this is what happened when I move this a little. Uh, you see, when I move, uh, there is a uh, PowerPoint doesn't cooperate. When I move one of them, let's say A. I disturb it, invariably disturb the interference. I cannot wiggle it without, the only way to wiggle it without disturbing interference is to wiggle them two together. If I wiggle them two together, nothing will, will happen. I will not see anything. If the frequency difference, they are not together. So when I just move, make a move, movement, if we had this profile, 1.5 millimeter, and we got here nothing because 1.5 millimeter from here and from here are together. But now they are not together, they are slightly shifted. Very slightly shifted. Because this one up, one down. Because they are shifted, this is what come, come out. Something very small. In fact, we tested, when we blocked this, we didn't see these photons. They were so little that we, we didn't find them. However, uh, they, they come here and they interfere <coughs> constructively with this wave. And in the end, we get exactly the same shift. If I get A or I get C. Like, should be, because the quantum description of A and C is the same. So there, there is a one-way explanation. But for this, I was important my experiment, that no one kind of saw it. Uh, in the end, you can you understand the result. But it's not natural. Van Neumann's textbooks are correct, but very complicated. Talking about photons that they go in some places, helpful. It immediately tells me where I can see the effect. Uh, all this result, this is classical simulation. Yeah, for me, it's very important that there is something going on there because result is something <coughs> that would be signaling. You would have the possibility that A, that the mirror A, communicates to B without anything going from A to D. But something is going from A to well, D. Of course. And this is simulation of just Maxwell equations. Because we had essentially 10 to the 13 photons we give Maxwell, or Schrodinger is the same story. And this is a simulation of just Exactly this wave function which come out here, as you see, uh, very much as what we got. We get the same simulation for the second experiment. This is a simulation. So there is a classical. So here it's simple because it's not particularly surprising, and here it's uh, more surprising. Uh, which one? Yeah. Okay. What's that finger? Well, I, I think let's cover it. I just. 
I wanted to check that this is all classical. This can all be understood classically. Classical. Uh, again, first I believe that everything quantum. Classical mechanics is wrong. We have to be able to explain every phenomenon in a classical way, so then use classical uh, description. Second, this experiment can be explained in classic, um, with, in Maxwell uh, way um, without need for quantum mechanics because 10 to the 13 photons approximation works. Experiment which will look essentially what I did, I found a weak trace of a photon measuring on the photon itself because it's otherwise a difficult experiment. If instead of measuring on the photon itself I will look on the disturbance of my mirror or so, something here, if disturbing this weak trace which I found, if I'm measured by another person, not the photon itself, there is no way to use the classical Maxwell equation I need. Uh, it's essentially I need entanglement, I need quantum mechanics. Unfortunately, until today, as far as I know, no one made weak measurement with external devices. So essentially, all weak measurement can be explained by classical equation, uh, all what has been done, but I, it's not impossible to make this experiment. I hope that it will be done soon. What's that also, your hand? Any further questions? In that case, uh, oh. Yeah, can you, well, two questions, can you give a little more detail on how this detector works? You said it measures, what is it actually physically? You say it measures two different things? Or? It's just, there is a one detector, then it's line, and another detector up. And when the light comes, the current comes out. Oh. So then uh, if light comes only here, the only current from here go. Light current here, only here. So, and then my computer, measures the difference in the current in, in this water detector and this water detector. Oh, so in any, for any fixed photon, I don't know if you can resolve the individual photons, but if you can, then only one of the detectors will fire, is that right? Uh, now, if this is, of course, uh, this kind of experiment I cannot do with, um, for single photon experiment, I have to put here a single photon detectors. Now, I can put this one single photon detector on this, on the lower part, another single photon detector on the yeah. upper part, and then I have to run this experiment many, many times, right. and to see a statistics of clicks here and here, and measure the number per per, per time here yeah. and there, uh, and see if I see the frequency, because if I have, if I go up, then the, the frequency of clicks here will be higher, and here the frequency of clicks will be right. uh, lower. So I can look on this frequency as a function of time, make this analysis, and I believe I will get the same result. Although Alan aspect in my talk uh, was kind of uh, trying to say that uh, he is not sure at least. I, see. I mean, there are these heralded photon sources that you can tell whether or not you're getting a single photon result or not. And you can get a pretty high rate of photons. So. Um, in our laboratory, my students would never finish his uh, <laughs> PhD yeah, because uh, for this run we get 10 to the 13. Probably we could oh, 10 see. to the 10 maybe will be enough for the analysis. But again, with these devices, it will be much, much longer. It took us one second to get this picture. And in the other case, it's yeah. really, really so, so these were not literally single photon detectors. Yeah. And what you actually used was? I still didn't quite understand exactly what you, your detector. I used laser. No, no, but for the detector. Ah, for the detector. The uh, counting detectors. What you maybe the first step is just to use the same detector but use single photon source. Yeah. And yeah. maybe say that this is enough. This probably can be done. Uh, maybe that's not. Since I believe it should work with everything with billiard balls in principle. So I don't know exactly what should be done. Is the measuring weak trace with some asics. Device. I think this is really very important. Right, that's more interesting. But the, but the out, I'm just trying to the output is just a number of two numbers for the detector. Is that right? A count In rate, a count rate per second for the top and a count rate for the bottom. Is it? No, the function of time. And it just yeah, the function of time. Yeah, yeah. count rate. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Okay. Uh, so this. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's a question for Mr. actually. Uh, of course, when you wiggle A and B something will leak to F now. 
can you immediately tell me that the height of the peak is the same as the height in C? Probably not immediately. I mean, of course, today, yes. Now, at, at present, yes. But this morning at breakfast, well, I, I read the paper before, so yes. But no, you don't read the paper, no, probably not. So that is the interesting thing, thinking backwards in time that you can immediately make that prediction. Something that would have been very difficult to see before. Just for me, my comment on my talk, what I find the most surprising uh, about this story is that Wheeler is wrong. I was uh, thought that maybe the concept of Wheeler is naive and not useful and whatever, but I thought that there will be always correspondence with what, Will what Wheeler said and the weak trace I will see. And here there is no correspondence. The weak trace, uh, the Wheeler says it was like this, and the weak trace appears there. It, Wheeler said that the post select, we need to take into account post selection. And his idea was, if you look on the different branches, take only the branch which can come to the uh, detector. Now, this, uh, in these kind of cases, it doesn't work. What should be done? Take into account, uh, we have to take into account the post selection by putting backward in time uh, the wave function. And this makes really symmetry between forward and backward evolving wave function. Then we will know. Then the weak trace is uh, described correct. Okay, one further question. This is much more of a general question, but your whole framework. I'm wondering whether you think that a, a subject like quantum cosmology is meaningless or not physics, because this is for those of us working in quantum gravity that kind of application, thinking about the early universe in a quantum way, or some generalization of quantum mechanics that's needed to be compatible with gravity, that's the most interesting field of application of such a theory. It seems to me that way you've set up physical theories or quantum theories, or whatever your framework was with that box, tends to exclude that kind of application. The main motivation is really this foundational paradoxes, uh, paradoxes of quantum mechanics, which are present in our life and everyday life, just put uh, one uh, source and two detectors, and we have collapse and we have paradoxes. So this kind of this is this is the reason why I consider only the standard uh, quantum mechanics, and I don't take into account any cosmology, any quantum gravity, anything of the kind. I might hope that this formalism will be helpful. Exactly. But uh, this uh, first, it should uh, first the, the more modest uh, program is just to resolve paradoxes of quantum mechanics. To say that the standard quantum mechanics, what we see in the laboratory, is not paradoxical. Then we can look on some new phenomena that geometry is not like this, and there are all kind of um, the next step. So I hope. In the formalism will, will, will be helpful there too, but uh, I don't know enough about cosmology to... There is this uh, firewall uh, discussion or whatever, I, I think that it's... Uh, if I would knew the whole concept, I, it, the formalism might be very uh, helpful. I don't know enough uh, about uh, cosmology to deal with this problem. Yeah, so I'm, but I'm just saying, I mean, I agree. That this is, it's reasonable to try and understand something about quantum mechanics in a more limited way. Um, and, but the greatest interest of such a deeper understanding, if it's achieved, it seems to me will be that it will guide us in the construction of new theories, in particular quantum gravity. But if you set up, I'm just worried that you've set up a framework. Maybe it's not really there. Maybe you don't need it to do what you're doing with weak measurements and two-state, two-time wave functions and so on. But the way you described it, it seemed to me like you excluded a priori, in principle, an application to quantum gravity or to quantum cosmology. That would be worrisome. Then whatever you learn will not be applicable. I'm not sure why I excluded a priori, but... Well, because you said it has to be a bo you have to have the system in a box and you have to have this observer outside the box with free will and turning knobs on the box. None of that applies to the early universe. 
can you consider kind of a small part of this, uh, just, you know, create a small universe in your laboratory? If you know how if to we create, could. then, think, <laughs> then, then uh, the, or think conceptually of some well, partial things that you can, uh, it's much more difficult. If you cannot change things, in, uh, then it's more difficult. If you have a theory, which you know what uh, for some part you can calculate, then you can uh, extrapolate. But uh, it's really the direction is like boom was trying to introduce kind of new things, hoping that it will go to new direction, just opening uh, ways. Here the direction is just the opposite, trying to clean things to make things out of paradoxes, and then in, when all paradoxes will be cleared up and some of them will not, you'll say, ah, this is the direction where we should go because tears and there uh, should be a new stuff. When you go to all kind of direction, you might not see. Um, the real uh, the paradox will, which will lead you to the new theory. We have one final quick point and then we'll move on. To the next um, really quick, because I, I cannot agree more with the last comment, and, and in fact, I will talk about this kind of models uh, after lunch. So I, I really agree with Sam who's saying that this is a very nice and easy way of describing the quantum mechanics. and. I think it can apply not only for microscopic systems but also in quantum gravity and cosmology. Okay, well, that's a good advert for later. And uh, that's the same again.